G'day ice cream lovers, my name's Steve Christensen. We're downtown Brooklyn, very exciting, Brooklyn, New York. I've got Brooklyn's own Arc de Triomphe behind us here. We've got the Brooklyn City Library right beside us. And a hop, skip and a jump down that way is Ample Hills Creamery. Now it's one of the most unique creameries that you'll probably ever find around this area here. And we're gonna pay them a visit today on the Ice Cream Bloke. G'day ice cream lovers. Okay, we're here with Brian. How are you, mate? Nice to see you, Steve. <laughs> it's good to see you. It's very exciting to be here. There's been a lot of press about this place, a lot of people talking. <laughs> yeah, a little too much press. <laughs> a little too much. Because tell me if I'm wrong, or correct yeah. me if I'm yeah. wrong, but you were only open a short amount of time yeah. before you ran yeah. out of ice cream. It was the four day shop. We were open for four days and uh, ran out. We've actually considered being only like a three day a month shop. We thought maybe <laughs> we'll be like a super secret society ice cream <laughs> shop. We'll only open for three days. Have a secret handshake right. to get in. No, but it, uh, we were open for four days and we sold out of everything. Then we closed down for about nine days because we just we needed to restock, rethink our um, processes, hire more staff, yeah. get ramped up and ready to go. And then we reopened two weeks ago today. and. Uh, so far, we're hanging on by uh, by our fingernails, <laughs> uh, just barely. Uh, Before keeping I up. go, if I can kind of stir some fudge or do some <laughs> dishes to help, yeah, there I'm, you go. I'm happy to help. Now, tell me a little bit about this neighborhood because, from what I gather, two things about it: it's very, uh, it's like a, almost like a microcosm mm -hmm. of culture. Yeah, yeah, there's all different types of culture yeah. people living here, and it's very street bound. There's a lot of people walking, yeah. biking, yeah, that yeah. kind of. No, it's, a, it's the Vanderbilt Avenue in the last 10 years has just blossomed into a real food scene and a family scene. So, um, this specific space though, yeah. the original building's been here a long time. Yeah, it was built in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s actually, and um, in the 1940s this space itself was a bar and grill, a real Irish. Oh. And what's really nice is that our actual bar frame where our menu board is, is the, is the original framing from the 1940s all the wood paneling, the ceiling, it's all its all original for that, that time period. So it's got, we've got some nice historical character. You've done something pretty unique with those tables. My original plan with the shop, it was, it was, was really grandiose and I had to keep scaling back. My original plan was I wanted to create a museum for the history of ice cream in American popular culture. I mean, that sold ice cream, that we made ice cream, but, but something that actually told the story of ice cream. Mm. Well, we scaled back from that uh, to some degree, obviously, but all the tabletops, we, 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 I've scoured eBay and Amazon for old ice cream posters and, and decals and signs. And so we've gotten this authentic piece of American mm -hmm. popular culture. We've got the uh, lyrics, the original lyrics to uh, Ice Cream for Ice Cream uh, up on, uh, in one of the, the That's frames. That's not the David Lee Roth ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> no, That's the original not. This ice is cream, 1927, so. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's pretty neat. Now you talk about uh the authenticity of making ice cream. Mm -hmm. You've got a rock salt and ice ice cream maker. <laughs> we do. That's relatively yeah. unique. Yes, yeah. there's not a lot of places in the neighborhood where uh, kids can uh, have an ice cream birthday party and I really love the idea of uh, kids being able to make ice cream for their birthday party and not just get to eat it, but get to learn a little bit about how ice cream gets made and so uh, how can we do that and have it be fun and so we came up with the idea for the ice cream sickle is what we call it. So the kids get to design their own flavor of ice cream and everybody takes turns and they pedal and churn and, and uh, boy, it, it whips up the ice cream really fast. Now, so far as ice cream is concerned, you're a little bit different to most ice cream stores in that you're actually making your base mix right, that's from right. scratch. Yep, yep, and that's yep. where we're in the kind of laboratory. That's right. Yep. Even as we speak, because <laughs> it's too busy yep. and uh, noisy outside. Yep. Again, it was really important to me that uh, people uh, they get their ice cream, know the origin of that ice cream cone that they get. And, and so they're not just coming in for the actual chocolate chip ice cream, but they're coming in to learn 
where it came from and how it came to be. I, I think that we live in a culture now that sort of values that understanding of, of, of the origin of something, where something comes from. And so they can just step down a few feet from where they bought their ice cream cone and actually watch us make their ice cream from scratch. What we've done is we've created a series of step-by-step -step signs that illustrate the process for people, for kids, for parents, for, for everybody, so that they can sort of see and understand. Because everybody loves ice cream, but not everybody really understands how ice cream is made. And also, we get really, really long lines here, so it gives people something to, to look at and watch. <laughs> well, well, it's pressure on you to yes. make sure that you're not dipping fingers exactly. in the Exactly. We keep thinking that what we should do is get some Nixon masks and duck down occasionally, <laughs> pop up with Nixon masks, <laughs> scare everybody, but we haven't done that. So uh, flavors of ice cream, how yeah. many do you do? We do about 24 flavors, I say about, because I can't keep all 24 in stock, mm -hmm. but we've got about 20 right now. The goal is 24, and we're sort of always getting close to 24. And um, we do about three, four, you know, maybe more like five or six bases. Instead of a traditional waffle cone recipe, I wanted to make a, a traditional sugar cone ice cream mm -hmm. cone, which is more of a brown sugar cone. And so uh, I got the waffle cone pattern, but I was afraid people were going to think, well, geez, it, it looks like, all yeah, it, and one, it looks like a waffle cone, but it doesn't taste like a waffle cone. And so what we did is we had our plates customized uh, and with a spiral pattern. So there's, we call them our spiral cone. They're really pretty and they don't look like a waffle cone now. They look like a spiral cone and they're a brown sugar vanilla bean. We scraped the vanilla beans into the batter. What and did you do before you became an ice cream man? Tell me it was some I, sort of free-thinking legend yes, because I, I, all, it seems as though all of the planets have aligned here. I, it has. I wrote uh, bad TV movies. Um, <laughs> I wrote uh, Alien Express with Lou Diamond Phillips aboard a runaway train with aliens. Uh, not did you get to uh, play any of these aliens? No, I didn't, but I did get to go watch it being filmed. That was fun. And then uh, I've done a lot of uh, writing and producing and directing. And I So just... the residuals, mm -hmm. the cash that keeps flying <laughs> no. in from the aliens on the train? Unfortunately, no. Not with TV <laughs> movies. That's... <laughs> so, so what we're saying is go out and rent yeah. Alien, Alien Express. Now, Alien you Express. know what? You can't find that one on DVD, I challenge you, but you will find Flu Birds. That was about giant killer birds with avian flu. If they don't kill you by eating you, they're going to scratch you and give you avian flu. <laughs> so, well, go and get it out on DVD yeah. and help Brian keep this place alive. There you go. We spoke about caramel yeah, being the yeah. quintessential yeah, drink. Absolutely. What we do is we, um, we make our own salted butter caramel topping for people sundaes and ice cream. And uh, so I wanted to take that salted butter caramel and somehow turn it into what my favorite drink as a kid was is just a Slurpee. I wanted to find a way to do a salted butter caramel Slurpee. And so I, uh, we got this uh, frozen drink maker. I thought, well, let's make frozen hot fudge and frozen salted caramel. So that's what we're going to do here. We take our salted caramel, which we make right here on the premises. And um, that's it, swimmingly beautiful. We uh, take a, a blender and we scoop out caramel. Mmm, and then we get some screaming kids. We put a little whole milk in there, organic whole milk, of course. Stick it in there and push number one. And that should do it. And there we get our salted butter caramel Slurpee. Well, Slurpee's trademark, so it's a slushy. So, salted, salted butter, butter caramel, caramel slurpee. slurpee. Yeah. Slurpee. Yeah. If you don't drink it, I'm going to. Oh. <laughs> That's in pretty intense. That is like it is intense, but it's almost like one of those um, traditionally made yeah. salted butter caramels in a yeah. frosty That's drink. That's right. Yeah. We wanted to do something that was intense but refreshing. Summertime. How know. many of these do you drink a day? Uh, <laughs> I drink the uh, the extra that comes out. <laughs> I intentionally made the recipe have about a fifth of a cup extra so that every time we make it. That goes in the fridge for Brian. <laughs> That's right. Well, I tell you folks, if you're ever down uh, Brooklyn Way, Ample Hills Creamery. That's right. Where did Ample Hills come from? Ample Hills is a line from Walt Whitman's uh, Leaves of Grass. I too lived, Brooklyn of Ample Hills was mine. And uh, Walt Whitman lived in Brooklyn, uh, and when Walt Whitman lived in Brooklyn, there were ample hills, there were cows in Brooklyn, there were dairy farms in Brooklyn. All of those things are gone now, but uh, our little myth is the cows have come back to Brooklyn. And, uh, is that right? Yeah.
I'm starting to get all emotional about it. <laughs> Ample Hills, if you're ever down in the Brooklyn area, you've got to come and see Brian and the crew down here. Absolutely incredible ice cream. Try a frosted buttered caramel slushie. Slushy, there you go. <laughs> and uh, all the details for Brian's store and everything that we've seen it will be on our website, which is theicecreambloke.com. Thanks, Brian. You're a thank good sport. You. All right. Thank Keep you, Keep on sir. scooping. All we'll right. see you next week.